What's going on guys, Jolts here, back with another build video, and today we're going to be going over Radiation Flag for level 65. Yeah, it's been a good while, I mean like 7 months since we've like updated this build, so I figured we'd come back to it and update it. Since then, there has been a lot of changes to the game, and now the build's even better. For those who don't know, the focus of the build will be to use Radiation Damage, and only Radiation Damage. Um, you might be thinking, well, Radiation on Armor, Mayhem 10, doesn't sound like it's going to be a good idea. Two things. One, Flak has so much damage that it doesn't even matter. And two, thanks to Lacey Data and Rator, they found a really cool trick with the Pestilence, which is going to shred anything. If you want to check out their channels, I will link them below. Um, I do recommend checking them out, because they do some pretty cool Borderlands content. Anyways, if you do want to download the save for yourself, I will link it in the description. And that save will be in PC format, so it's only going to work on PC. As for console, sorry guys, there's no way to convert from PC to console at the moment. But maybe in the future we'll get that option. Alright, let's jump into the build. Like I said, the focus for the build will be radiation, and you want to go for radiation everything. And also, go for the U-Rad Annoying. While you're below 50% HP, you're going to have 150% radiation damage. Now, if you can't find this annoying, I do recommend the 100% radiation damage on next two mags, or even the Gamma Burst 115% radiation damage. All of those are going to work fine too. Another cool thing about the build is you can use Rag Attack, Gamma Burst, or Fade Away for the build. Like, you can pick and choose whatever you want to use based on situations. First up, we have the Pestilence, and we gotta talk about this. When you overheat the gun, it will explode and do radiation damage to the player. But if you're wearing the red suit, you will not take damage. The thing is though, the explosion gets mayhem scaling and somehow action skill damage. Because of that, it hits for godly amounts of damage and almost one-shots everything in the game. Let me show you. So we can't show it in Sanctuary because Sanctuary doesn't get mayhem scaling. So let's go ahead and overheat the gun. We'll find an enemy. Here we go over here. It blows up. And yeah, 28 million off of a what? 6,000 damage pistol. Mm-hmm. On top of that, to make it even more broken, you can keep doing melee and never, um, you know, unheat the gun. So you're going to keep noving over and over and kill everything in your path. Now, it is a little bit disorienting, so do keep that in mind. Next up, we have the Tig's Boom. Now, for this gun, try to get as many pellets as you can on it. One, this thing does great damage if you shoot the enemy. And two, you can easily apply radiation damage to yourself with it and activate the elemental projector. As a plus, it will rain meteors from the sky and shower the battlefield. The Complex Rune. At the moment, the splash damage radius on it is not working the way it should be, so we're going to take advantage of that. Basically, if you have a splash damage radius boost on your class mod, or area of effect damage on your artifact, this thing will explode around the whole map and destroy everything. Let me show you what I mean. Now, I did give a warning at the beginning of the video for this build, so just in case, if you are epileptic, look away now. Okay, so what we're going to do is shoot like over here. Kevin's over there. And yeah, you can see we hit him. And also we hit ourselves. Now, because we have the red suit on, we're going to take no damage. Also, that will activate our elemental projector for even more damage. Yeah, for mobbing, this will be the ultimate weapon. For a non-DLC alternative, I do recommend the Sandhawk. We have the Backburner, and the Backburner is overkill for mobbing, but for bossing, it's pretty good. It has really high damage output. The red suit. This will allow you to take no radiation damage at all. With this build, there's going to be radiation everywhere, so you got to make sure you have this. As for the Anoint, make sure you have only radiation on it. Don't do action skill and fire, action skill and corrosive. If you do, you're going to take damage and down yourself. The Porcelain Pipe Bomb. Yep, it returns. I did a lot of testing with grenades, and even this grenade beats out the light speed. If you throw this grenade at the right position on the enemy, um, for most basic mobs, it will insta-kill them. On top of that, it does radiation damage and will apply the damage over time to you. That again will activate the elemental projector for bonus damage. As for the Anoint, go for on grenade thrown. Now, don't bother stacking on action skill and radiation damage on your shield and grenade, because using two of the same anoints will not stack. You only get one of them. So yeah, the grenade throw anoint is going to be way better. The Red Fang. This will make it so enemies don't focus on you and focus on your pet, because as you can see, we only have 26,000 shield. So you're going to have all the damage, but you're going to be a glass cannon. Ideally, try to get as many points and heat bites as you can. Believe it or not, with 6 out of 3 on heat bites, it will reflect enemy damage back at them, and enemies will actually kill themselves. Yeah, right now enemies have Mayhem 10 weapons, so they're going to get a taste of their own medicine. Now, if you want to get that crazy splash damage radius on your complex route, make sure you have splash damage radius on this. Elemental Projector Deathless. 117% bonus damage is going to be a lot. Also, that's going to be active all the time because you're always going to be radiated. Now, it has to be a Deathless because you have to take advantage of the u rad annoyance on your guns, so make sure you have that. Like I mentioned before, if you want to get the crazy splash damage on the complex route, try to roll area of effect damage on this. I do want to mention you only need one of these, so either a splash damage radius on your class mod, or area damage on your artifact. We have the beacon, and the beacon has very high DPS, 
So you can spam this at enemies or even spam it at yourself to activate the elemental projector. Also, when you reload, you set off Novas and those do pretty decent damage. The Flipper. This gun on any build is ridiculous. It puts out 9 pellets for the cost of 1 ammo and it's also splash damage. Now, sadly, you can't shoot it at the floor and radiate yourself, but it does mob and boss really well. If you don't have DLC, I do recommend the Kipsworth. The Monarch. This is also a high DPS weapon, so it will mob and boss really well. Also, thanks to Lacey Data and Retour, there is another broken trick used in this and the Pestilence. Let me show you. Check it out. So we have the stack bot on, and the more consecutive crits you hit, the more damage you get. That applies for your Nova. So right now we're going to do, let's see, 1 million damage. Now we hit 100 crits for 500% bonus damage. Blow it up again. 6 million. Yeah. Remember, Sanctuary does not get Mayhem scaling, so this will literally one-shot Trant, one-shot Cycles on Anathema, one-shot Gigamine, one-shot a lot of bosses. This trick is broken. The cool thing is, too, this Nova will not reset the stack vibe. So you keep that 500% bonus damage on your Novas all the time. The only way to use it is to either travel to a different map, hit a non-critical hit with a bullet from your gun, or go in to fight for your life. If those do happen, the bonus will reset. Also, I do recommend using Fade Away for stacking crits easily. Jack is just a cutout, and yeah, he doesn't move. Next up, the Convergence, and this is really good for mobbing and okay for bossing. And now, if you don't have DLC, I do recommend you take Spoon. The Major Kong. Now, this launcher is very strong, but very slow for mobbing or bossing. You don't really need it for the build, and honestly, the background is going to be easier to use. But it is a fun weapon. The Sandhog. That is going to be your alternative if you can't use the Complex Root. And this gun does great damage, and you can splash it at your feet and activate the Elemental Projector. I was trying some other grenades, and the Hunter Seeker is a great choice too. When you throw it, it's going to shoot out bullets and also activate Megavore. Because of that, it will also activate Headcount and leave no trace. That means you can regen ammo and get cooldown back. Now, if you want to go Rambo and not worry about the Red Fang for distracting enemies, you can give yourself all the damage by putting this on. It is fun to do, but do keep in mind you're going to be going in to fight for your life a lot. We have a stack bot. For each consecutive critical hit in a row, you're going to get 5% gun damage. After 100 crits, you're going to have 500% bonus damage. I only recommend this if you want to use the Novas from the Pestilence for bossing. For mobbing, this thing is complete overkill. If you don't have DLC, stick to the Cosmic Stalker. Cupper's launch pad, that's just to get ammo back if I need it. Finally, a snow drip for getting around maps. Alright, that's it for the gear, so let's go over the skill tree. For the pet, you want to go for the Great Horn Skag. That will give you 15% more damage for all sources and 30% gun damage. Now, you can use the Spider and Scorcher, but health regen's not going to matter. We're wearing the Deathless Artifact, so it's not going to make a difference. If you do want to keep enemies off of you, I do recommend using the Red Fang with Gamma Burst, Empathic Rage, and Endurance. Gamma Burst will make it to where your pet can never die, and they can do radiation damage. Empathic Rage will increase your damage from all sources by 20%, and Endurance will give you extra Gamma Burst duration if you get a kill. Ferocity, only two points here to move down the tree, we don't super need it, but Persistence Hunter will be nice. That will give you more gun damage and action skill duration. Only one point in Who Rescued Who to move down the tree. Every time you do damage, your pet's gonna heal. You're gonna be doing so much damage that your pet is never gonna die. You only need one point there. He bites. When enemies damage your pet, you're gonna reflect that damage back. Remember, enemies have Mayhem 10 gun scaling. If they shoot your pet, it's gonna reflect back and enemies are gonna kill themselves. Yeah, this skill is actually pretty awesome. Now, because He Bites will actually count as your pet damaging enemies, it will auto stack Frenzy. Frenzy can stack 10 times and will give you 40% bonus damage. That damage does apply for all damage sources. Psycho Head on the Stick. That will give your pet a little more movement speed, which means it'll be nice for him getting around. Also, if you go in to fight for your life, your pet can race over to you and revive you. That is, if you're specced into the Lick the Wound skill. Barbaric Yop. That will give you bigger pet bonuses. Finally, we have Pack Tactics. That will give you more damage, and that damage applies for all sources. Alright, onto Orange Tree, and now you can use Rack Attack too if you want to, and if you do, I do recommend Flock and Load and Rack Accelerate. Flock and Load's gonna give you additional racks, and Rack Accelerate will give you one more charge and better cooldown. Enter Planetary Stalker. When you get a kill, you get a stack, and that can stack three times. Depending on how many stacks you have, you get bonuses. The only one we care about is that damage bonus of 13%, and that applies for any source of damage. The cool thing is, if you boost this with the Cosmic Stalker and also boost your big game, with 3 stacks, you're going to have 78% bonus damage. That is a lot. Leave no trace. When you hit a crit, you have a chance for ammo back. Hunter's High. You get bonuses depending on the enemy you're fighting. For humans, bonus crit. For robots, bonus damage. And for beasts, you get damage reduction. Headcount. When you hit a crit, you have a chance for cooldown. Big game. That boosts your hunter skill duration and effects. This skill will boost the effects of your stalker skill, also the most dangerous game, uh, furious attack, and also frenzy. 
the most dangerous game. When you kill a tougher enemy, you get a 2 minute bonus, and that gives you bonus gun damage, crit damage, handling, and pad damage. Galactic Shadow. You get a little more crit damage and enemies focus on you less. Grim Harvest. That will give you more gun damage, action skill damage, and pad damage. Remember, the Pestilence Nova gets boosted by action skill damage. Why? I don't know, but it does. Also, this is good for boosting your rack attack. Finally, we have Megavore. You have a 20% chance to hit automatic critical hits. Because of that, this skill synergizes really well with the headcount skill and leave no trace. So when you shoot, you get ammo back and also cooldown. Alright, now for the green tree, you can use Fade Away too, and if you want to stack the critical hits for the stack bot to boost your Pestilence, put on your Gorillas in the Mist. If you're not going to be doing that, but you want to use Fade Away, take off Gorillas in the Mist and put on Name Circus. When you exit Fade Away, your pet's going to taunt and enemies will focus on you less. I only recommend Fade Away if you're not doing a Red Fang setup. As for the skills, Furious Attack. When you shoot the enemy, you get a stack, and I can stack 10 times. That gives you bonus gun damage, handling, and pet damage. Eager to impress? When you or your pet gets a kill, you get cooldown. Now, because we can mob really fast on this build, you can cooldown any action skill extremely fast. And finally, lick the wounds. When you go in to fight for your life, your pet can revive you. I do recommend this skill because if you're not using the Red Fang, you're gonna go down pretty often. Yeah, you're gonna have all the damage, but you're gonna be a walking sheet of paper. Alright, that's it for the skill tree, so let's show off the build. We're on Mayhem 10, here's the modifiers I have. And we're gonna start off using Gamma Burst. Put that on. And I do want to give you guys a, you know, flashing warning because we're going to be using the complex bird. Look at the minimap. They're pretty much all dead. This guy over here around the corner. Okay, they're all dead. And remember, these can hit crits too because of Mega Boring. Yeah, we cleared that in what, like two seconds? Wait for cooldown. Place the pet. And now let's do the Pestilence. Again, you don't have to stack it for mobbing because it's already going to one-shot everything. So don't worry about doing that. You're dead. This guy over here. Look at him running away. He's scared. All these guys here. Goodbye. Your screen does get pretty fuzzy, but you can follow your minimap. Enough with the crazy overkill. Let's do the takes boom. This is the more fun setup. So enemies focus on my pad. I can run around and start shooting the takes boom. It'll rain meteors. I can throw the porcelain pipe bomb. Recently, the damage effects of shields got mayhem scaling. So check it out. If I get near the enemy, they take radiation damage. Yeah. So you can actually kill them AFK if you want to. And also, we can activate the Elemental Projector to boost it even more. Alright, Red Fang's fun and all, but let's go ahead and go for all the damage. And so, I do want to do Fade Away now. So, Fade Away. Uh, we're going to take off Gorillas in the Mist. Enemies will focus on my pet when I exit. So, I do that. Go for this guy. Now, pet's going to taunt right after. Yep, there he goes. And now, enemies should focus on my pet more. Porcelain Pipe Bomb. Look at that. That thing pretty much one-shot that guy. Crazy. Okay, you're all dead. This guy over here. What kind of barrel? Radiation? That's fine. Oh. I think death got me there. Alright, now for Tron, we're gonna do all porcelain pipe bomb. You ready for this? Yeah, guys. It's still ridiculous. And you are dead. Alright, let's show off the brokenness of stacking the stack bot for the pestilence. So, you do want to put on Gorillas in the Mist. There we go. And put on your Dictator. And now we gotta hit 100 crits in a row. That should be good. We'll just go back. I do want to restart the fight and start it fresh. Remember, if you go in a fight for your life or travel, it's going to reset your stacks. But now, we have all the stacks. Get nice and close. And set off the Novas. One, two, three, four. You're dead. One more thing. If you do want to avoid the flashy lights, you can look at the floor. And then wait for them to go off. But yeah, that's going to be it for the video. So anyways, if you do want to download it for yourself, I will link it in the description. Again, that save will be in PC format. And yeah, if you guys did enjoy the video then please be sure to leave a like because that'd be awesome. And if you guys really enjoyed it, be sure to sub. You guys have a great day and I will see you all later. Peace out.